Hey, hey happy campers. campers. It is week 20 here at Camp Shady Birch. 20 weeks, we are half term. The baby's half baked. Hell yeah. Whoa, whoa. Take the baby out of it for a minute. Okay. 20 weeks. Yeah. We've done this 20 times, actually. We've done it a couple times because sometimes we start and I'm like, this ain't the vibe today. We had a whole episode that will never see the light of day. So technically 21. Well, w- Jonathan has this dream that he wants us to create a Patreon. And we have a re- a lot of really funny episodes um, like planned for it. And you want to post that on there. We have some other things we want to do. We're not really ready to do that just quite yet. But maybe in the near future. And then if you it, you may be able to hear that one. Yeah, that's maybe. A, that's we'll a see. really chaotic episode. But we are so excited that it's episode 20. And I feel like, are we excited about anything else? What if, What are you excited about? Okay, you literally just set that joke up for me after I asked you before we started. And I got my heart racing because I'm so excited to talk about it. Girls, this is exclusive content. I don't think anyone will know by the time that this episode airs. So that we're dropping this for the campers only. Mm-hmm. I got a text last week that said, hey, Zach, um, quick question. Are you available Monday to do an interview for um, TikTok IRL at the Sirius XM office? And I was like, I'm booked. I'm, 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 I will book whenever. Like, I'll come. Yes, I'm available. OK. And I was like, what's the interview for? And they're like, oh, it'll be fun. Like, low key. You're just going to interview Snooki, JWoww, and Vinny for the new season of Jersey Shore Family Vacation. No big deal. Just going to come in and just have a, have a couple cues with them. They literally asked, guys, on Monday, tom- we're filming this on Saturday. So by the time it's airs, it will be, I will have already done it, but I'm interviewing my life heroes, Snooki, JWoww, and Vinny on um, Monday. And I'm terrified, excited, and it's going to be amazing. I'm so excited. Do you have the little Jersey Shore butterflies in your tummy? I do. It's my Ron Ron juice. <laughs> <laughs> I think you're going to do so good though. I feel like you're really good at interviewing and you're good at like asking questions, following up, ping ponging and all that stuff. And um, I'm stoked for you. It's ex- it's exciting for sure. Thank you. I'm not going to talk about it too much because I want to talk about it again next week because I'm so excited because it's like the biggest moment of my life. But I was DMing Jenny, me and Jaywell, our friends on Instagram and um, which I am never going to be over. And she was like, I was like, I'm so excited for my Monday, she was like, I'm so excited. And then we like talked for a little bit. I'm obsessed. But that's not the only major announcement we had this week. What else did we have announced, babe? Guys, major announcement. You may have seen it on, on our Instagrams, but Zachariah and I are going to be co-hosting the Valentine's Day Top Song Countdown at TikTok Radio and Sirius XM. I'm so excited. I can't even believe it. So I'm going Monday for Jersey Shore. Then we're going back on Tuesday morning to do the Valentine's Day Countdown. Hi, guys. Us again. Not the podcast getting us two Sirius XM <laughs> gigs in like a minute. Like that's, I feel like that really credits it though. Yeah, I'm so excited. And we can talk more about like details when we get when it's gonna I think it's gonna be on Valentine's Day I just don't know what time it's gonna be so we can give you details as soon as we know that but we're gonna be hosting yeah I'm, I think you're right I think it's not gonna we're recording it really early for that one like my Jersey Shore one I think will come out like the same week but the Valentine's Day one I set up I think that's gonna air on Valentine's Day but we'll let you know but I th- it's pretty crazy like they were like talking to us they're like hey we might get you the studio that Andy Cohen uses um at, at the Sirius XM office I'm like not us sharing not, not us just sharing some hot mics excuse Hi, Andy. Andy spit on this mic. Andy spit on this mic. <laughs> Can you believe it? Now I'm going to put it up my butt. Oh, I'm joking. You're sad. Can you edit that out, please? Yes. <laughs> um, big, big news. So all this to say is we had so much to celebrate that on Tuesday, I was doing a little photo thing with my friend Josh that we're friends with. And afterwards, we're like, hey, let's celebrate like the photos and these amazing announcements that we got. So let's go out for drinks. Just a couple. Just a, 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 a nice dinner and a couple drinks. Why does it always start? With the idea that we can stop after a couple cocktails. It never happens. It never happens that way. It doesn't. We went to, we did go to a nice little restaurant. You're, and I, you're a missing nice... a part of the story. I'm what? sorry. I didn't mean to cut you off. We were already drinking at the photo studio. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Two whole drinks. Two Aperol spritzes there. And then we were like, we need some grub. Yeah. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to cut you off. That's okay. And then we went to the nice restaurant. They had cloth napkins. Bougie. You already know. And there we had like, <laughs> sometimes, hey, I was in college. I would walk past a restaurant and be like, that looks nice. The food looks good. They have cloth napkins. I can't afford it. And I couldn't do it. So to me, cloth napkins are like a one. Olive Garden has cloth napkins. A one. <laughs> okay, okay. That's not what I said. So we had like one or two drinks. I had this lovely wine that actually, it came in a little bottle. So it was more than a glass. So in my head, I was like, it's a glass. It's a, it's a little glass of wine. Um, I had three yeah, in addition did. to the two Aperol spritzes. Mind you, this is, what time is this? Like six, seven? It was like six and we had already had like six drinks. Yeah. 
And um, what were you? What did you have? Um, I was probably drinking gin and tonic. I don't yeah. remember. It was a really cloudy night for me. It was because then we we were like, why does the train have to stop here? We're not at Hogwarts yet. Let's keep <laughs> on going on this hot mess express. And we took that to uh to our little corner. Uh, what would you call it? A, a watering hole. Watering hole. Yeah, we the night carried on, and then I think we ended it at like ten. Yeah, but it was a it was a day full of drinking. So the next day, I woke up, and I can only describe it as guys. I think this was my first major adult hangover that I always hear about. I've been very blessed in the hangover department. Only very few times in my life have I really been really sick the next day. I bounce back pretty quick. I'm a spring chicken. You do. But I I don't know what happened. Last Wednesday, I, I couldn't even function. I had the shakes. The diarrhea alone was, it was insane for two days. And like, I felt like I was floating all day. We were watching the podcast back from last week yeah. and I was just like laughing being like what the fuck are we talking about ever we're like literally just like buzzing around like butterflies never making an actual complete thought ever we we watch them the episodes back to like get the clips for Instagram so that's why we were doing it we weren't just watching it to watch it while we were hung, hung over no I, what was the one thing I kept noticing there was a you said Switzerland and I kept saying Sweden no I said Sweden you said Swiss. you were like Swiss the, we love the Swiss and then I said Sweden uh, what 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 happened? We I did was, get messages about that. I was just so foggy on the couch all day, and I just can't believe that. Hey, I'm turning 28 in a couple weeks, and I and I feel like, am I getting old? Welcome to the club. Welcome to the club. I'm going to be dirty 30 in a couple short weeks. Yeah, but there's a difference between us. I'm like 10 feet taller than you. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right. I always pick on the Shua guy. No, I just feel like I constantly feel like I'm 15. I'm always just like buzzing around like, woo. And my body is like, hey, you may be young at heart, but your knees are getting bad. The lower back pain isn't going back to normal anytime soon. And you have to mix in a little bit more water if you want to party like a rock star. Young at heart, old everywhere else. <laughs> <laughs> this is going to be inappropriate. Um, no, I feel like I am finally realizing that I'm getting a little older. And that's okay. I actually found my first gray hair a few weeks ago and then it disappeared I, I think she poked out and we cut her down and she said okay i'll stop you on the other hand are miss mrs salt and pepper hi it's me yeah and it didn't really happen until um covid when i i used to have really long hair and then i cut it all off and maybe it was under there all along and i just didn't see it no that's not true i used to rock like an ariana high pony yeah. Can you picture me here with an Ariana high pony like this, like with, with it wrapped around my titty? I don't know. I would have loved to have seen it, but I think you look so handsome now. And I also Thank feel you. like you have the most beautiful speckle. Like it's like silvery gray and you already have light hair anyway. So I think it really blends well. Your mom also has like silver hair. So like, and your dad has white hair. So you, you were never going to keep that color, babe. Just call me Fred Claus. I think it looks great though. I don't even like, especially it's like, it, it looks like you like dyed it. It looks really nice. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate that. Yeah. I'm not really, I don't really care that much about gray hairs is that weird like in my hangovers i do care about like that day after that was like a will smith slap to the system that was we were out for like two full days but gray hairs don't really you know affect me in the aging way I well no i don't know i'm not that worried i earned them i just feel like there's also like a double standard with like men getting older versus women i feel like women are expected to look like 21 at 60 and like men get crow's feet at 30 and they're like oh my god look at him brad pitt it's like it's kind of like shitty i definitely think that's like not fair i think men have been allowed to age gracefully for many years and women have not and i'm here we're here to break the stigma you can gray whenever you want and you don't have to get any Botox. Just live your life and just eat good and drink water and wear sunscreen. And I think everyone, you'll if people do that, you'll look better than everybody else anyways. I think let's embrace the crow's feet. Let's embrace the gray hair. I'm not joking though. I say that and I know I'm getting Botox this year, guys. <laughs> I'm not. And this isn't, no, I'm, let me let me defend this for a minute. Um, I was born with a really pronounced forehead bone. It's I'll just high profile for anyone watching on YouTube. Pause it. This is giving prehistoric. It's it's giving caveman, and it's it's a family issue. So I just want a little zap there, just to thin out that line, because um, it just it never it never looks good. When I use a smooth filter, it still picks up. I I don't care about my lines around my eyes, but this needs a little touch. I'm gonna be honest. I'm getting a touch there because I want to, and that's okay. And that's what I was gonna say too, because as you're saying that, I'm nodding and I'm like, literally, I have crow's feet. Because I smile so much because I'm jolly. But yeah, I need to get rid of those too. You don't have your crow's feet. You don't really have crow's feet. I do. That's just like and a you fat know what? face. That's okay. <laughs> 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 no, no. Anyways, can we do a little cheers? 
Yeah, what are we cheersing to? Oh, I'm empty. Um, yeah, cheers for that. Cheers to getting older. All right. Attention campers, please meet at the old flagpole under the tall pine for morning announcements. Attention campers, speaking of hangovers, I found a beer bottle in the communal showers. <gasps> Was it broken? Worse. What? Unfinished. Oh. You guys, you know the rules. If you're going to open a container of alcohol, you have to finish it. You have to, it, it was about, there was like a quarter left of it. It was a McLoe Ultra too, a Mickey's. That is, what was, was it when it's, when it's religious? A crime. Blasphemous. Sacrilegious. Sacrilegious is the word I was looking for. So don't worry, I did finish it. <laughs> It was a warm. From the taste, it was in there for about a couple of days and a couple of other people. So it did taste a little bit like soap, a little bit like dial, a little bit like uh, like body wash. Yucky. Um, but I did finish it because I hey, I don't make the rules. I just follow them. And um, and you should too. So if you open the container, you have to commit to finishing it. Okay. Those are the only rules. Also, no no glass in the in the in the bathroom, please. So thank you, campers. I love a shower beer. Side note. I do too. Especially in the summer. After mowing a lawn, maybe I've only done that once in my life, but hypothetically doing something manual labor and then having a cold beer in the shower, but I want that to be in a can, not a bottle in the shower, preferably Bud Light. Just yeah. thought I'd say that. Sorry. It's a, I, I used to have, I don't think I brought it with me, but my friend Carly got me a shower beer thing that you stick to the wall. I've seen them. Yeah. We have like glass here, but the shower that I had when I had it had like the textured tile, so it would never stick. And I did have a can fall on me. I was like, I can't use this. I just have to... Stick it right up there in the shower caddy. But yeah, I love a shower beer. It's nice. It's refreshing. Yeah, but all that to say is we finish our shower beers, campers. So make sure you're finishing the beer. All right. So we've got a little bit of housekeeping. In the last episode, we did go off a bit talking about um, baby names. And a lot of you seem to like them and have your own ideas. Also, can I... Hold on. Hold on. Before we go any further. We got a lot of messages, more than I expected, from people saying that they were... 19 weeks pregnant along with our episodes when we were putting them out. Multiple people. Were you guys fucking to our pilot episode? I can't believe you just said that. Oh my God. What? I'm just, it's just a cue. There just is, a cue. There is a, you are right. There, we had that one camper who emailed us and then that, that next week we had a lot of, this week we had a lot of people DM us being like, I'm also tracking alongside yeah. Camp Shady Birch. So it's going to be a baby hoopla in 20 more weeks and we can't, we're so excited for it. We really are. So congrats to all of our pregnant campers and to all of the campers who aren't pregnant we love you all equally and so with that being said i'm going to i'm going to have some um some comments that you guys left us i just want to read a couple just a couple read them all let's whatever. go through these yeah. okay parentheses oh that's actually cute i love that word tragedy spelled t-r-a-g-e-d-e-i-g-h tragedy best friends with felony i think that that's a beautiful <laughs> name <laughs> this um this girl commented uh, i saw a girl on tiktok whose name was V-Y-L-A-N-C, pronounced violence. She would be friends with felony. Oh my God, she would. Violence? No. <laughs> I love this one. Gabriel isn't used enough. You're not wrong. Yeah. You're not wrong. I think because Gabe sometimes can be a stressful name. Wait, why? Um, well, I think I think of Gabe from The Office. So I think once a name gets a little bit of a character, like that's a little stressful. Um, it can be it can be hard. But Gabriel was also a beautiful angel in the Bible. And being a former former current um, person named after a Bible character. <laughs> <laughs> Which season did you like in the Bible? I was actually in the original season. Oh, actually, I was in season two, New Testament. You... New Testament season two. That's the reboot. <laughs> That's the reboot. Oh, my God. New cast, new faces, but some returning. <laughs> like God. Sorry. I'm sorry. I'm done with talking about it. I'm not making sense. Keep going. Okay. Just a couple more names. Malaria. Yeah, stunning, but also a global disease. Chlorine, spelled C-H-L-O-R-E-E-N. Oh, that's pretty. Very summery. Epiphany. I've heard that, and I actually, that does sound like a name. I'm not, I'll just say, Epiphany sounds like a girl I know. Marissa. I hate that. It sounds like Marissa, just you're mumbling it a little bit. Marissa. Arsony, with an I-E at the end. I think that's pretty. And my favorite, Larceny. 
Oh, I was just going to say that was my follow-up joke. I was going to say our arsony sister Larceny. Yeah. Arsony and Larceny, they came over for chocolate chips, cookies, and cocoa this week. And, and we made we made little cardboard cutouts because her mom was at work and she's a nurse, you know. And I, and, I, and I can watch the kids sometimes. Not all the time, but sometimes. And then they lit the house on fire. That was me playing the neighbor too. <laughs> wow, incredible. Um, yeah, so that's those are some honorable mentions to add to our list. So if you guys are, are looking for names, which you all are, we're at half term, guys. We're half baked now. We got to really start putting together the names so we can stencil it on the walls. You know, we want to buy the, the uh, who, who is it? Who does it? The monogram. We, Jan Sport. We need those names on that LL Bean backpack, babe. Larceny. I like it. Love it. So that's all I got for housekeeping. Nice. Do you want to tell us what you've got? For morning announcements, a little article. Morning announcements, campers. This is the news that you might have possibly missed that we didn't want you to miss, okay? So this is so funny and so tragic, and I'm obsessed with this story. Um, the article title was, World's Worst McDonald's Will Shut Down After Nearly 40 Years. Canada fast food store that sparked 900 police callouts over fights. Oh, no. So there is a McDonald's in Ottawa that has just been recently shut down and it has a very um, peppered past. <laughs> it's got a peppered past. I love that. Um, it's spicy for sure. Um, so like uh, the, in, in 2018, that was a really rough year. They had like 800 of those calls were all in that year. 800. 800. So it used to be a 24 hour McDonald's. And after that year, the police were like, you're done. Say no more. You're done. Now you're 6 a.m. to 10 p.m. And um, that kind of helped a little bit, but there is some really iconic fights that you may have seen on the internet. I hadn't seen them, but after seeing like them on YouTube, they definitely great garnered some traction. One of the most notable fights was in 2013. If you want to look up the fight on YouTube, it's called McDonald's UFC. Um, a bar, a bar brawl, a brawl wo- broke out in a McDonald's. I've never seen more people in a McDonald's to start off with this video. There's like 40 people in there and these two men are fighting and then they stop fighting and then more men fight from either side. It's just like a rotating door of fighters in the middle of this McDonald's and people are screaming. And all of a sudden an elderly man, or I should just say an older gentleman walks up into the middle of the fighting area and pulls out a live baby raccoon out of his jacket and shows the audience while people are fighting around, around him. <laughs> It's a live baby raccoon. And he was almost using it as like a protection. Like, don't fuck with me. I got the raccoon in my hand. <laughs> Where did he get it? I don't know. And that's why this was, this McDonald's kind of was put on the map from this story. And then it became really famous. This is like a, just like a brawling location. Another video was from 2018, this time where two men were fighting and one man grabbed the wet floor sign and cracked the other guy over the head multiple times with it. I just want you to know the sound of a wet floor sign cracking over the head of somebody else is what you think it would be, but also equally alarming when you finally see it in action. Also worthy of the look up as well. Um, I was going to say, I feel like it's probably louder than it was hurting. I don't condone I, I, violence. I agree. But because it's like it's like clapping together, like a little clamshell. Yeah. It, it's So these are just like the fights that were caught on camera. But after like all these years of the cops continuously going, they did change the time to 6 a.m. to 10 p.m. And it did help a little bit, but it still was like a very popular place for brawls. Um, so the McDonald's people that run the franchise location, they claim that they're shutting down the location due to like – um, but sales not performing well. Um, it was COVID. They had like a restructuring of this, the, the um, street with the subway. They were doing sidewalks. They're blaming on a lot of things, but most people think, hey, like this is a real remarkable time where the world's worst McDonald's is shutting down. What a disappointment. That's I never got sad. to go and get my like black eye that I always wanted. Oh. I'll take a McFlurry and a kick to the rib, please. <laughs> That's a McRib, baby. Ah! Um, that was funny. I was emotional because you know how you know how I feel about McDonald's. I, they're close to my heart. They're close to my loins, and I'll always care about them. So, um, to the Ottawa staff at the McDonald's, we salute you and everything you did for the community and everything you've been through. Dear God, like, do you guys need therapy after that? Now, my question is, what whatever they put there next. Is it going to be like a triple A and everybody's just going to be fighting at the triple A? Yeah, it's got bad energy. It needs to be saged. It needs to be cleansed. It needs to just be burned down. Maybe yeah. make it a burial site. Oh. Maybe it was a burial site. <gasps> oh. That's what's got dark energy. Probably. Guys, always check where your local your local watering holes are, your local restaurant tours are. Make sure that you're not dining on top of a burial site. It happens more than you think. Oh, that's scary. Do you have an article for us today? Um, I do. I do. 
All right, so this article is coming from the Miami Times and it's by Jess Swanson. And the title is Miami Man Injured by Falling Iguana During Outdoor Yoga Class. Oh. So there's this woman, her name is Anna Margaret Sanchez and she was teaching like a free community yoga class and she had been doing it outside for a while. 2020 comes along, everybody has to do things outdoors. So her class grew from like 20 to like 50 to 100. So on this particular day, it was in January, 2023, and the weather was beautiful and you know people are still you know working on themselves in the new year so there was a lot more people than usual there was 150 people at this class and they're in this gorgeous park a grove a grove if you will a grassy <laughs> knoll too and there's there's a big tree it looks like a willow tree it's probably not no it's absolutely not a willow tree it's a beech grove tree yeah probably uh, if i've ever seen one which i haven't 150 people here She's on Instagram Live doing this because she's like, hey, everybody out there just needs a free little yoga class, right? We're 47 minutes into this the, this class. Long class. It's a long class. Um, and we're doing like the cool down. We're only, we're only doing it for an hour. And everybody's like relaxing. And the last pose she tells everyone to get into is the, um, what is it? I put it down, the corpse pose. Doesn't sound relaxing. Yogis, you might know, but for yeah. those who don't know, what is the corpse pose? Essentially, kind of like? just laying down like a corpse. It's the most vulnerable pose in my <laughs> in my opinion. You're just like very relaxed, and um, so I'm watching. I, I was watching it, and uh, you hear this thud off camera and I'm gonna play you the audio clip and if you're watching this on YouTube which I highly encourage you to I'm gonna play the clip I'm gonna put it right here lift your hips and just hold for one two three. guys I think we're gonna close the class right now I'm gonna take care of somebody that's in uh, just got an iguana dropped on his face all right I'll see you next week a classic Russell thud and gasp, the one, two, three. A man was hit in the face by an iguana that fell out of the tree. Oh no. While he was literally just like trying to relax. Um, luckily though, paramedics were nearby buying sunflowers for some reason. It was a gorgeous day and people That's were having so funny. They're like, hey, sunflower, stop. And when iguana <laughs> fell out of a fucking tree and onto a man's face. So the man is okay. He is a yogi named Michael. Shout out to Michael. And um, he is okay. But he did get, uh, what is it I wrote down? Oh, his eye was swollen shut and he was bleeding from his face. Yeah. His nose and his lip. Uh, they didn't specify how big the iguana was. But listening to that thud, I'm going to say it was probably like eight pounds. 80? Eight. Oh my God. Oh, no, I not 80. 80 pounds. Like, what iguana is this? Michael would not be with us. He'd be buried under that McDonald's. Definitely a couple lacerations to the face. Yeah. For sure. And um, apparently the iguanas were, were doing the dirty in the tree and fell on him. Oh, bumping uglies. Bumping uglies, hey, the ugliest. You thought he was in a vulnerable pose. I'll tell you what, those iguanas were bringing it to a whole other level up there. So vulnerable, one fell out of the tree. Um, I, have you ever held an iguana? Um, I have. I held an iguana one time. My older brother growing up, Caleb, um, he, he owned an iguana when we were very young. Iguanas, for those of you that don't know, um, they're very, they are very, like, scratchy. Like they're crispy. They, yeah. These are not the words to describe them at all. I'm so sorry. Um, they're like pointy. Like they're like if the, there's there's no soft part of them is what I'm trying to get. You at, described okay? a toolbox. Well, that's that thing falling on your face. What I'm trying to say is like those scales. They're not they're they're not gonna bend. They're gonna break skin. I'm all, all this to say is that the sound of it. I just want to say the rustle, the thud, and the gasp. Like it's just so funny to hear because you can't see it from the video, but you can just you can infer. I just feel like that really, really hurt. Yeah, and also, sorry, I didn't say this earlier. The iguana's okay as well. Probably was a little shooken up, but at least was getting laid. So. She was like, "I was squirting." I'm sorry. <laughs> You're sick. I imagine her coming down and she like has her nail, her little talons painted with, like <laughs> acrylic tips, and she has lashes on, and she has like she's like, "Damn, I got all dolled up." And and I, I just fell literally 20 feet. Well, how do we know it was the girl iguana? They said the small one. Okay. Well, she could have, he could have been a small little man. And and if that was the, if it was the man, she's never calling him back again. No. She was like, you embarrassed yourself. In front of 150 people plus everyone watching on Instagram live. Well, when you originally told me this story today, I was like, oh, the iguana probably, like it probably froze because that happens in Florida, right? I've heard that like when it, when it freezes in Florida, iguanas are known to fall from trees because they live in the trees and mm -hmm. then they freeze, it can fall out. So I was like, oh, that's funny. But then when you told me that they were just fucking, I thought, hey, you know what? Power to the iguanas. Everybody's got to catch their nut. Mm. And I love that. <laughs>
Get out of the water and onto the dock. You're not going to believe what I just heard. Welcome back to Gossip Dock. I feel like we haven't been here in a minute. We have not. The dock has been closed for refurbishments. We painted it what color, Councilor Jonathan? Holographic. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I panicked. I panicked. We now have a holographic dock. It uh, it does reflect the sun into your eyes. Yes. And it, it is blinding to anyone on the other side of the lake. But, um, but it looks really good. That was so fierce. My eyes started to well up because I pictured it. And I was like, wait, that is... It's going to say holographic. Like, that is so funny to me. That was really funny. I love that joke. Thank you. That made me happy. You're welcome. Anyways, back to Gossip Jock. <laughs> this is the part of the show where you can write in and you can tell us your little deep secret, something that you just want to, like, just spread the tea about. And we love that. We haven't done it in a little bit. But we read this one. Was it emailed to us or was it on Instagram? I believe email. We read this together and I was kicking my little legs. I said, this was a funny one. So let's get right into it. I was on vacation for two weeks and I needed my cat and plants to be taken care of. So I asked my friend, let's call her Jackie, to do it. I told Jackie I'd give her a hundred bucks to come and feed my cat every day and water the plants when needed while I was away. Quick bit of context. I met Jackie a few months before this incident and we clicked instantly and had been hanging out often. So I trusted her. I love a foreshadow. Yeah. <laughs> So I went on my vacation, and when I came back, my house was a mess. She had used all of my dishes and left them dirty in the sink. She also left some trash, and the floor was filthy. On top of this, I saw that she had clearly used some of my stuff in my apartment without asking. She broke my bong, which was annoying, but I'll get over it. And it usually wouldn't matter if my friend used some of my things, but this was different. She drank all of my wine ate a lot of my food in the pantry, left my fridge absolutely filthy, left a window open which caused watermarks to form on the wall from the rain, left food crumbs and stains on the floor, left the toilet absolutely disgusting. I draw, <coughs> I draw the line at wine. I'm sorry. When I, go, when I got to the bathroom, I noticed my vibrator in a different spot I don't usually put it in. Weird. I got a little closer and I realized someone had clearly helped themselves without even bothering to clean it. I was absolutely horrified. This is my favorite part of the story. I need to preface this because I like, okay. I, comf <laughs> I confronted her about it over text and she admitted to it. I didn't even know how to respond. Obviously, she didn't get paid and I'd never seen her again. Signed, I wrote this because she didn't sign off, but I wrote, signed, scrubbing my apartment clean in cabin 14. I, how, okay. A clearly used vibrator. Was, is she not washing her snurb in the shower? I think it's so funny that she confronted Jackie. She's like, did you do this, girl? And Jackie said, yeah, I did. And she's like, I don't even know how to respond. Like, <laughs> it's like, uh, oh, I thought you were going to defend it or blame it on someone else. But she's just like, yeah, no. And I took your wine and I took your snacks and I left streaks in your toilet. Absolutely foul and disgusting. I don't even know. I don't know how I would respond to that. Not just her saying that, but like coming home, I'm like, yo, this is someone that I've been hanging out with and I'm like trusting. Is that... Is that a power thing? Is that like a fetish thing where she's like, I'm going to wreck your, I'm going to wreck your place and I want you to see it. No, this is like just someone who has no boundaries and is clearly just a genuine disrespectful person. Um, this isn't a gossip. I mean, this isn't a dear counselor. So we don't really have to give like what we would do in the situation. But I think like any of these isolated would have annoyed me. The broken bong, I think she took really nicely, but I'm like, okay, that's something you have to replace. Yeah. The water stains. Like I think even having the audacity to leave dishes in someone else's sink after they like you like did that, like that's crazy. Maybe like... Oh, no, you have the individual Ritz cracker sleeves. And I had a couple while I was watching your cat. I love that. Like, I want you to hang with my cat. I want you to have some snacks. You drank all the liquor, bitch. You used my vibrator, okay? I have to repaint the walls. I want my deposit back. Oh, all coming, like, back from a vacation where you're already, like, having a downward dopamine, a lack of dopamine in your brain. So you're, like, already sad about that. I hope it wasn't, like, a long weekend. I hope it was, like, a long vacation for her at least. Can you imagine all I this know. happening over, like, a Friday, Saturday, Sunday? I think she said it was a week. I think she was gone for a week. Okay, she well, said at least she had that moment. But, damn, that sucks. Um, I hope the cat was okay and I hope the plants were okay because that was the initial concern. And something tells me if she's this, disrespe she's this disrespectful – I'm concerned that the plants were never water. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. How were the plants? 
How she, are the plants? Not her just like squat and being like, I'm going to feed the cat and then um, flick my bean for a minute. Like, oh, no. she, hey, does she have any canned beans? I'll eat that too. Like, <laughs> come on, girl. Jackie's a savage. If you don't take care of your plants, it's going to end up like this. I'm going to put it in your camera so you can see. There's a hair on it. Um, if you're listening to this audio, we've had this little bunny rabbit uh, on this table with us in our cabin for a very long time. It's looking very sad. You've had that for a while too. Shannon, um, Shannon got it for me for my 26th birthday. I have it for almost two years now. Oh. It was a jade plant. When we moved here, I lost a lot of my plants. This apartment isn't as light conducive to plants like my other apartment was. Yeah. But um, either way, I would take that one dead jade plant over anybody using and breaking that much stuff at my house. We are really sorry to you, Camper, and I'm so happy you did not pay her up front. Grab your bug juice and bear spray campers. It's time to pack it up and take a hike. Welcome to Take a Hike. This is the part of the show where we bitch a little. We talk about the things that have been grinding our gears, things that are getting under our skin, things that are getting on our nerves. So last night I was on Snapchat, which I rarely do, but you know those like web articles that you can subscribe to or they kind of like force you to look at them have you seen those yeah it's at their explore page and it has like little like <clears throat> like shows and art yeah they have like that it's like i'm here to have my a silly little filter on relax yeah i'm trying to send pictures of my snurb in someone else's house while i'm neglecting the cat <laughs> not neglecting my cat anyway anyway so there was an article that was written so sarah michelle geller B buffy the vampire slayer among many other incredible characters she had a TV series that just premiered the other night. I think it's called Wolfpack, Wolfgang, something like that. Anyway, she was there with her husband and fellow Buffy the Vampire Slayer alum, James Masters. You didn't watch the show, so you don't know. I didn't. So he played Spike. You don't really need to know that, but he's 60 now, and she's like 45. Um, and the title of this article that was in bold was, So Vampires Do Age. And I clicked on it. I was like, what the fuck? So I'm reading it, and they're talking about how unrecognizable they they were at this thing. I'm like, first off, she aged finally and he's 60 and he doesn't look terrible. Like, what the fuck? So my take a hike is for Daily Mail. I'm sorry. This was coming straight from Daily Mail. <laughs> it was. Can I, I was, just say something really quickly? I wish you would. My McDonald's article. <laughs> <laughs> from Daily Mail. Daily Mail is it's smut. It's trash. It's it's sensational. It's it's fun when it's not about you and when it hits a little close to home, like your favorite TV show of all time. It stings. If you want to play with fire, be prepared to get burned. You know what? You're absolutely right because when Vanderpump Rules was on, which a show that I love, anytime they would write anything, I was on Daily Mail. I was logging on to Daily Mail. I was just checking in to see what anybody was saying about anybody. But now, like Buffy the Vampire Slayer is one of, if probably it is my favorite show of all time. It is. Um, my cat's name is Buffy, and I just love Sarah Michelle Geller. But I clicked it, and then there was another link about Sarah Michelle Geller, and the title says Sarah Michelle Geller, forty five, nearly spills out of her tank top after sharing several revealing bathing suit photos during her vacation. You want to see the photo that they shared? Was this Daily Mail too? This is Daily Mail. You guys, this is, I'm going to put this on the YouTube. This is what that title was about. It's just a picture of her wearing pants and a tank top. Her boobs are completely in. There's barely any cleavage. It's a nice picture of her. First of all, she looks incredible. This, in do you want to see the length of the article? Hold on. I'm scrolling. I'm oh, scrolling. Oh, wait, hold on. I want to other one. Go back up. Yeah, guys, she looks like unclockable. She looks amazing. I don't know what they're talking about. And all the comments were disgusting. They were like, she's unrecognizable. I was like, are you kidding me? She looks like she aged well. Okay, in the middle of it. Mm -hmm. The middle of this article where they're tearing her apart. Literally, they have an ad for the pants she's wearing. And they're going to get a commission. Daily Mail will get a commission. They're like, love the look. You can get it for three twenty five. dollars yeah, well, the thing is with the Daily Mail, right? They have all these staff writers and they're all required to write a certain amount of posts a day. And it, sometimes it's a dry news article. So they have to get the clickbait. They have to get the views. They have to get their commission. It's not good. It's not right. But it is a job. And no, do it. And I, I hear what you're saying. But this is literally slut shaming talking about her spilling out and revealing. Yes. You want to see the bathing suit picture of her revealing the only one she posted? What? This is her very revealing uh, of photo in her one piece hot pink Barbie swimsuit. First one of all, piece. That's giving granny. I don't even like that. It's a little too covered up. I'd like to see her a little more. It's a one piece. Yeah. Well, I just think like they're they're just they're looking for clickbait. And guess who got clickbaited? She did. You did. I did. 
oh my god i did it i clicked and so i know that they were or are being sued by elton john and they were sued by prince harry prince no prince harry because of like personal text messages and voice calls that were sent from like some internal source that actually ended up being true when daily mail published it you ever been on their website not on mobile i was just on it today pop-ups galore i everything's being thrown at you um are they essentially the uk equivalent to tmz no what's different about them this is not as reputable i think that well they've been around a lot longer than tmz they were like the newspaper that was in london but i think they've been around since the 1800s and now it's really just turned into like every single article they can possibly come out with every hour is kind of just like giving a brief like here's what so and so did yesterday they took a walk and then they went home (laughs) And also they looked like a slut. Would you like to buy her pants, her slutty pants? Um, uh, yeah, I can't. They I, also have articles that are like, it'll be like young, it'll be like young bride throws cocktail at, at mother-in-law at wedding. And her response was like, and I love stuff like that. Listen, I don't agree with it. I don't like it. Have I been bitten by the bug that is the clickbait? Yes, I know. And I think, thank God that we have critical thinking skills and we can make our own decisions. Um, I'm just sorry because I use that source for the Ottawa McDonald's and I'm a little embarrassed. And I think Sarah Michelle Gellar looks incredible and she's an, a phenomenal actress and she doesn't deserve that. Yeah, I agree. But will I be revisiting the website tomorrow to see what's good? I will. Yeah. And I'm ashamed of that, but I'm a human and humans make mistakes. Um, so I'm just gonna, I'm just coming clean about that. So anyway, what's grinding your gears? Um, what's grinding my gears this week? What I want to take a hike is just inappropriate or things I don't like about the drive through. Oh, come through drive through. I was trying to figure out like one thing I could say about the drive, my drive through experiences that I don't like, but there's so many that I kind of just want to talk about a lot of them and just kind of see what we think about it. Okay. Drive through etiquette. Let me just start with this new phenomenon that McDonald's started that I don't particularly care for. Um, the double drive through lane. Ah. Uh. I think in theory, it was an amazing idea. Its execution is at best poor. Um, I'm never sure of which line to take, and it feels like one line always moves slightly faster. Have you ever pulled up to the screen at the exact same time or before somebody and seen them get their order taken first? I've been in the car with you when it happened. Yeah, and I am fuming. And all this is to preface, when I make all these statements, guys, I am not one to yell at customer service. I never say anything to them directly, but I'm allowed to be upset and have my own opinions about it, okay? Sure. I was wronged. I want to complain about it here, and this is what the segment is for. I didn't tell anybody this, but it made me really upset. Like, why are you installing this technology if you cannot keep keep track of what is going on. And if you're going to defend them and say they do know who was there first, then why is that person shading me? And why are they choosing to neglect me even though they knew I was there first? I don't like it. I want to go back to the traditional way. I feel like it would be really confusing. If anybody works at McDonald's and is listening to this, oh my God, two McDoubles. Hi, we're talking about McDonald's again. I love those golden arches. Um, Let us know how it's going. Is it helping out with your numbers? Because I feel like it's confusing. you got two cars. You're taking orders at the same time. Someone's back there flipping burgers frantically and getting paid not enough. And um, yeah, I don't don't know. Well, let me tell you where homophobia wins. Oh, God. At Chick-fil-A. They have cracked the code on how to run a drive-thru, okay? Horrible company. They hate the gays, but are they efficient in the drive-thru? Credit, give credit where credit is due. They've got it handled. Let me make another claim against McDonald's. And you know what? I'm just going to target McDonald's right now. I don't like when somebody's in front of me and they choose to order a massive, complicated order through the drive-thru. Mm. Oh, wait, if you have some sort of issue or like a disability or you're differently abled and you have to use the drive-thru, This isn't about you, okay? But I know that some people are just purely lazy and they don't want to go in. It must be so difficult to have to be on the other side of that to put all those modifications in. And it's also annoying for the people behind you because then we're waiting longer. If you're making a multi-piece combo order, I need you to leave the car. I need you to go in because you're pissing me off because now when I pull up to the window, I'm waiting even longer. Mm. Longer than I anticipated. And I just think it's annoying. McDonald's does have that pull pull up thing. And I love that. They're like, hey, Come to spot one because you're pissing everybody off. You need to wait. Yeah. I hate that. Um, And then my last thing that really irritates me. Yeah. Beyond belief is when um, I'm missing an item. 
Oh. Like, I, I honestly, like, have a full diva moment. Personally, I don't tell anybody about, about this. I don't wrap around and be an asshole. But in the car, I want to start crying. I'm like, I really was looking forward to that McChicken. What if I've already driven off? What if I'm missing a fry? I always check before I leave. You I don't do. care if it takes an extra second or not. I would expect the same person in front of me to do that. So just look really quick and see if everything's there. And mistakes happen. I get it. It just can be very frustrating. And I'm and I'm, I'm bringing a brat, a brat right now. But once again, I'm going to reiterate, I don't ever say anything to the customer service people. I'm very polite. I just think for me, it's a major inconvenience. Yeah, yeah. Okay. This is a safe space too. We're not, this is the stuff that we we tuck deep down and we don't complain. So now we're complaining it to you. And you guys, yes. wear your headphones. This is not for everyone to hear, okay? This is just for you, Camper. So shut up. This is a safe space. <laughs> Turn your volume down. Anyway, um, yeah, no, I did that once. The first time I ever went to a drive through post COVID, well, it was still COVID, but obviously. Post reopening of- Post reopening of everything, yeah. I went to Burger King and I made my order and I drove all the way home. I didn't check. I Ugh. didn't do- Rookie mistake? The one, two check. Sorry about that. And I learned my lesson here. I got all the way home and I had someone else's order and it was all meat and I couldn't eat it. And my soda was flat. So I, I was sad and I went back and they were super nice. Like I, mistakes happen. Hey, of course. I used to work at a drive through and I can tell you, they tell people to pull up because the numbers run and then it goes straight to corporate and they're like, why was this person waiting for X amount? And they don't want to hear it. They don't want to hear how long someone had to wait. I Some of the stores like really don't care. But um, that number isn't supposed to go like above 60. I want to test who has better, worse anger issues. I know it's me already. When you got home and saw the Burger King was wrong, what was your immediate reaction? Were you like upset? Were you angry? Were you like violent? Like, what, what did you think? I was upset and hungry and nervous. The other night we got Taco Bell. Like I, I had one of the worst days in my life. I never talked about it on the podcast. It was it was like awful. I like I started the day falling down the subway steps, like on my back. I'm yeah, like, spinal wait, injury. Wait, can we like, can we just walk through slowly what built up to this? Just a couple of the things. I don't think it's really that necessary because it's kind of it's like it's so out of context now because we're talking about fast food. Okay, well every everything that could have went wrong was going wrong that day, and it was a lot. Yeah, it was a lot, and I was just really tired. And at the end of the night, all I wanted was Taco Bell. And you ordered a quesadilla and fiesta potatoes. And I wanted to indulge because I'm allowed to do that. And I wanted a Crunchwrap Supreme and a quesadilla as well. And I was so scared that if I got a chicken quesadilla that they would put two in there. So I was like, I'm going to be nice. I'm going to get the bean one that you get to make sure that it doesn't come with me. And when it came to the house, you there was only one quesadilla in there. And I had a full Crunchwrap Supreme. So you were like, it's okay, you can have it. And I'm like, babe, you can't just have potatoes. It's fine. And I was like, whatever you do, do not cut it in half. I'm so upset. Just eat the whole quesadilla. I hear you grabbing a knife and plate in the other room. And I said, Jonathan, if you don't eat the fucking quesadilla and let it go, I'm going to flip out. It was an awful day. And I didn't mean to snap at you, but it was just like, no, I can't believe they forgot the fucking quesadilla. It was just... It's and you know what? I feel bad. I'm gonna apologize to you because you know who didn't get you who got the brunt of that frustration it was you. And you're not an emotional punching bag. And I'm really sorry about that. That was a really rough day for me. It, it was. was inappropriate. I opened the drawer. I was getting like a fork for myself. And then I was going to grab a knife and you were like, put it back. I was like, okay. <laughs> Because I was like, don't be a martyr right now, okay? Just eat the case root. I have a full crunch wrap. And it was just... Uh, I just felt that you had such a bad day and literally nothing was going right for you. And I was there with you the entire time. And I could see how, like, everything was... And it wasn't just, like... I feel like that it's out of context to say you were just that mad about an item being missed. No, like, it was the built up. This was 11 p.m. after we just... This was... I think it was the third or the fourth because we just had our first drink after dry January <laughs> three days in and it was an awful experience at that bar after having an awful day sliced you fell down my the hand steps. open yeah sliced your hand open we walked 11 miles didn't find a single wardrobe for whatever event we were going to it was a lot it was a lot yeah so it wasn't just the missing item but Yes, it can be frustrating when people forget your goddamn quesarito. Also, I hate it when you go through a drive-thru and the soda's flat and or um, no syrup. That also pisses me off. Um, anyways, I'm so sorry. I've, I've never felt as guilty bitching about things because I feel like there's an end result here and it seems like it's like an error on like a customer service worker and I do not believe on any time like being rude to people like that. So instead, I just internalize all this yeah. and I've used the entire camp council, <laughs> camp, <laughs> camp Shady Birch as my emotional punching bag today. It's been taken off of you and put onto all of you bitches. So you better listen to it, okay? But you know what? I feel a little healed. Do you feel a little healed? I do. I do feel healed. Do you think the new counselor likes the 
the top bunk or the bottom bunk? Over. Either way, I'm giving them my boondoggle keychain. Over. Dear diary, I fell in love. And the person I fell in love with is me. Welcome to Crush of the Week. <laughs> Are you your own crush of the week? No, I just thought like self-love is always important. I thought I would mention it because we talk about other people and other things. But sometimes you need to be your own crush of the week. Hey, man. Who is your crush of the week? I feel like we've been talking about sauce a lot. Like sauces, creams, things of that nature. And All the time. My crush of the week is mule sauce. <gasps> oh, I love. Tell everybody what mule sauce is. I feel like people don't know. Okay, so the first time I ever had mule sauce was with you. Mm -hmm. The year was 2020. Yep. It was a dreary day. And I was making shrimp tacos. I don't know what. You were making shrimp tacos. Or no, shrimp quesadillas. It doesn't matter. Something like that. Anyway. <laughs> anyway. And you had just gotten an order of stickers like for your merch or something through this website called Sticker Mule, which I've used before. Great company. Love them. Hashtag Huge company. Not sponsored. But I guess they had sent you a bottle of hot sauce with it for some reason. Yeah. And it had their label on it. And it had the Sticker Mule logo. And it said mule sauce and i was like that's so random why is a sticker company sending you a bottle and i thought maybe just because the label it was like oh we do labels on bottles too we had it you guys it was one of the best hot sauces if not the best hot sauce i ever put in my mouth and hey crucify me crucify me if you've had it before and you hated it it was so good it's like sweet and it's spicy but it's not too spicy it's also not too sweet and it's just like oh it's a habanero base and ghost pepper is in it oh ghost pepper is in it too there's ghost pepper in it there is a little hey this one's got a little sweetness to it there's a little sweetness to it not too much but it's really balanced nicely with the heat of it it's very spicy only thing i don't love about it is the way it comes out of the bottle i'm looking for a little bit more momentum but i guess they're trying to really kind of control it because it does get spicy fast yeah and also they i, I was on their website yesterday <laughs> <laughs> ordering another bottle and um they said they didn't want it to be too watery so they the consistency and they were like trying with like their cutting edge technology of of what's going on with the little um the opening the it, it works it's it's not too watery at all yeah. um can you buy them in stores or is it only available online it's only so it's only available online and it actually started you wonder how it started the ceo like had homemade a batch just for like his own home sake and just like enjoy doing that and uh, they're from Amsterdam, which I didn't know. And oh. they had this like community day where it's partially giving back to the community and also partially being like, hey, we're a company that's from here. Here's like some some of the stuff that we do. So they had like a burger truck or something and they were putting their stickers all over like the little labels and all that fun stuff. And they had the hot sauce there, weren't selling the hot sauce. It was just like, here's some hot sauce that I made that I think is good and I put on burgers. And everyone was gagged by it. Everyone was like, yo, this hot sauce is really good. Like you should sell it. And then they started joking about it in the office. They're like, we should sell it. Like we already have like, we sell stickers. Why can't we sell hot sauce? Um, and then they just started selling it. They started selling it on the website and they're selling like hotcakes. People love that shit. I feel like if they were in stores, it would be a wrap for them because it is so good. I think the only thing about that is like, I'm not a person who would typically buy like a sauce online for a starter. And here's the thing. They send them as free samples. And the sample size is normal. Is a normal bottle of hot sauce. So it's not even a, a sample size. So I was looking, I was like, it has a lot of like five star reviews and a couple one star reviews. And the one star reviews are really just people who were like, I didn't order this. I didn't want this. I don't need a whole bottle of this. It's wasteful was what people were saying. Yeah. And I get that because you kind of just get it. And if you don't like hot sauce and you think it is kind of wasteful, I guess for people who don't want it. But like if you like hot sauce, you should order this online. It is a really a recommended day. This is not sponsored, you guys. It's so good. We love it. Oh my God, I love mule sauce. If I could um, renew my baptism, it would be in a blessed bowl of mule sauce. If that got in your urethra, I don't think anything about that event would be blessed. <laughs> um, also, really quickly about mule sauce, when we went to Tennessee for the first time, we were at a small local watering hole, a barbecue joint in Virginia, and they had stickers all over the restaurant. Oh, yeah. And when we sat at the table... That was like right after you tried mule sauce. Mm -hmm. It was on the table, remember? It was yeah. like it was 2021. And there was a mule sauce sticker right on, on the, the table. table. And we yeah. were like, wow, people, the word's getting out. Words, yeah, because it was literally in we were in the middle of nowhere. That was a great place, by the way. It used to be a gas station. And they were like, no, and no, they, no, yeah, and then they like turned the entire inside into like a barbecue place. I loved it. I will say sticker mule, like the parent company, is probably like the be all. Like it's probably they're like giant. So I'm mm -hmm. sure like anyone who's if everyone's getting it that's ordered stickers. I'm sure a lot of people have tried it now because like they're very popular place to order stickers from. Yeah. 
So, um, hey, great promotion sticker mule. We love mule sauce. Yeah, oh my god, we love it so good. Love you, muley. So, um, what are you crushing on? Um, I'm always crushing on food, but I'll just know. I just love talking about food. So, my crush of the week this week is any restaurant that has a complimentary hors d'oeuvre. I think oh, okay. it's the most phenomenal um, option at a restaurant. Um, let's start off with my favorites that start with bread because bread kind of like corners the market on um, um, free hors d'oeuvres when you sit down. Yeah, you got to get your BB, your bread basket. My favorite free bread would be hands down. Let me guess. The Cheesecake Factory brown bread. The Cheesecake Factory brown bread is the god tier brown bread or just the god tier bread that's given out at restaurants for free out of any in the category that I'm about to list, okay? It is just amazing. The sourdough's good. Sourdough's good. Huge. Yeah. But the star of the show is the brown bread. Would you mm, agree? I would agree. I would agree wholeheartedly. And I wouldn't have thought about that because you made me try it. You were like, this is so good. And I tried it. So I'm like, wait, wait a minute. Now, now hold on a minute. This is really good. It's so, okay. So um, can I go with the rest of my list? I was hoping you would. Um, a, a new favorite that's, that's, that's risen to the top after a recent experience. Um, the Cheddar Bay Biscuit from Red Lobster. Ooh. We had that last week, you guys. I just quivered. When was the last time you had Red Lobster? It's time to revisit. Oh my God. We had excellent service. We talked about it actually, didn't we? I don't know. I think we talked about it last week. I don't know. That might have been cut out. I don't know. But it was... Ac- it, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Talk about the Cheddar Bay Babies. It's just... It's, what we're looking for when it comes to free bread at a restaurant is individuality. What are you bringing to the competition that nobody else can? What are Cheesec- you bringing to the table? <laughs> Cheesecake Factory, bringing the brown bread. Red Lobster, bringing the Cheddar Bay Biscuit. Olive Garden has really like I don't like love the breadsticks, but I will say it is iconic in what they bring. Another great one, yeah, Texas Roadhouse. Never been. Y'all are bringing the um, the dinner rolls with the with the honey butter. Oh. The rolls itself are warm and fluffy. We love that, but it's that dollop of cinnamon butter. It's mm-hmm. it's original. It's something different. It's something you look forward to. What are the bread baskets we're asking more from? They give you cinnamon butter like up front. It's whipped cinnamon butter. Oh, That's interesting. What's special about it. I feel like they would have went like a little bit of a, of a like a we- more western. I think they just were like, hey, let's figure, let's do something different. It's different because obviously um, Outback Steakhouse and Longhorn have very similar like loaves. I think Longhorn. I don't know what kind of bread it is, but then um, I think. Outback is doing a pumpernickel loaf. Very hearty, hearty, great bread. I don't know if every Chinese restaurant in America does this, but where I'm from in, in, in South Coast Mass, they love to give Hawaiian rolls with the little butter tabs. Mm-hmm. I look forward to that. When you were growing up getting Chinese food at a restaurant, no. did you, there was no free bread. No, it was usually the uh, the little wand of the crispy bitches. Well, let's move on to that. So now I have a separate category yeah. out of bread. What are some other amazing free offerings from a restaurant that isn't bread? So this is very specific. But the Black Whale in New Bedford has that little like dip thing that they make. And then the crackers, the multigrain crackers. I will say all of those little, no, they're not multigrain. They're, they're like seeds. They're seeded. It's kind of, I would say, yeah, it's like a seeded it's like, multigrain. Yeah, it's like bird food in, in a good way. But they get stuck in my um. Yeah, in my I don't love that. My, you love that. I, I do. I enjoy it. I think that's good. I've never seen anybody do that where they bring you like a cold like dip. Yeah. With little long crack. It's good, though. That's good. I love when an Asian restaurant gives um, the wontons with the duck sauce to dip. Yeah, I could fuck up those crispy bitches. That's phenomenal. Also, how can we can't have this conversation and not just think of a simple chips and salsa. We would be remiss. We would be remiss to not talk about chips and salsa. Chips and salsa. <laughs> we love, love, well, love that spicy stuff. All this to say, there's nothing quite like flipping through a menu and having a free offering as you sip a beverage and figure out what you want for your main meal. I I want a little bread and butter. I want a little chips and salsa, a little wonton and duck sauce, a cheddar bay biscuit, something to just kind of ease the kettle as I look over the entrees and the other hors d'oeuvres. It doesn't take away from the experience. It only adds to it. And it brings me back every single time. It's a phenomenal addition to any restaurant. Bring back more free offerings as I'm seated at the table. Another one. 99s with the popcorn. Yeah, what's up with that? It's so, it's unique. Very inexpensive too. If you're a restaurant looking for a little free offering, popcorn is not expensive as a whole, I would assume. Maybe I'm wrong. And if I am, I'm sorry. But I think popcorn was, I love a free hors d'oeuvre, I do. So if you had your own restaurant, what would your free hors d'oeuvre be? For me, it would have to be bread based because there's nothing more that I I love more than bread. Um, We went to this restaurant one time in Philly 
and it is very bougie. What was it called? I don't know. What With the talking. exotic bread basket that they gave at the table, we got went there for brunch. We had those incredible omelets. Why Center am I City, Philly, on this? very bougie. I don't remember this at all. It's 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 like a French bougie place. We sat outside. I got the I got the cocktail for the oh, first time. Oh, park. Park, Park in Philly. When you go there for brunch, if you're in the area, I'm sure you already know about oh it if you're God. from there. Park, so good. They give you a variety of bread basket. There's a cranberry loaf in there, mm. an orange loaf, mm. a baguette, mm. some sort of soft bread. It's a. Ver- I like that. I, lo- I I love bread. I I love bread like Oprah does. Okay, and when there's multiple options in the bread basket, I would do that because my dream is to open a breakfast place at one point in my life. I will do it. I know I will. I'm gonna do it. So maybe I'll do a local artisan mix. Yeah, you know what I mean. Oh my god, that was so good. And then I had the ratatouille. I had a ratatouille omelet. Ratatouille omelet, and that's where you discovered that one drink that you like, the butterfly, the 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 purple butterfly. Is that yeah. What it's called? The butterfly? Hey, maybe that drink will be my camper crush of the week next week. Oh my god, that is so good. But that's another story for another time. But that was so good. I fucked it up like Remy Ratatouille. That's a cocktail for the ages, guys, and we'll bring it up next week. But that's all I got for uh, my crush of the week. It's come under your bread, and yours is. What was mine? You were crushing on, kissing on, daily meal. Oh, meal sauce. <laughs> <laughs> What song's been stuck in your head all week? Welcome to Camp Songs. Welcome back to Camp Songs, where we talk about the things we've been singing, the things we've been humming, the songs that have been stuck in our heads, if you will. The soundtrack to our lives, if you will. I love that. (laughs) So the song that I've been listening to a lot, we actually were just listening to in the car, and I was like, oh my god, this has to be my... My song of the week. So it is Bets on Us by Cheat Codes and Dolly Parton. It's such a good song and it just came out and I feel like it's not getting the push that it deserves. Maybe I'm missing it. We also don't listen to radio. I suppose. I suppose that is true. But I I feel like it's really not getting the push that it should. I just, I love Dolly Parton. I adore her. I have a Dolly Parton tattoo. I would ride and die for that woman. And Cheat Codes is, they're in their like country era right now. I'm only saying that because I have one other country song by a guy named Mitchell Tenpenny, which sounds like a, an 1822 sure London who, street performer. I'm not sure who Cheat Codes is. You would know some of their songs. I, it's just, it's floating out of my head right now, but you would know some of them. Um, but they're like the EDM and then you bring in Dolly Parton and it was like, it's game over. I love anything she does. It's such a good song. You guys, hey, if you want to listen to it, I'm going to put it in the playlist that you got. You already know the drill. You can listen to it for free on Spotify or on YouTube. I'm going to put the link in the description. Such a good song. It is so good. I just, I adore her and I love this new song by her. And she just, she keeps putting them out. She keeps putting out. Well, what's interesting about this one and what's different for this one is like, it's definitely got, it's been mixed. It's not her singing on like with a little little guitar background. It's like fully like DJ mixed Mm -hmm. by those, who are the people? Cheat Codes? Cheat Codes. And she sounds so good. The woman's in her 80s and she's on an EDM country track and it sounds like incredible. Their voices sound so good together. And my issue is, I think they put it out. They were trying to put it out on the coattails of the success of, of her the and new, Miley. of her and the Miley thing, and I think it was a real miss on their part. I, it, to me, the song "Scream Summer." It's, yeah. Oh my God, you're so. It's a summer bop through and through. I just got a, chills. I just got chills picturing myself in a one piece. <laughs> the Barbie one piece that Sarah Michelle Gellar was wearing. <laughs> so revealing. Um, no, I think it's a windows down kind of song. It's the top off the roof off the Jeep. We're going down the road, and it's that. It's giving mm-hmm. that energy. You know what it reminds me of? What. BB Rexa, if it's meant to be, it'll be. It's that kind yes, of country. Yes. It's not real country. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's like pop country. <clears throat> mm-hmm. I agree. It's amazing. It's such a good song. Dolly. I, I've, it's so interesting to me because I was thinking about it. I was like, I haven't had a Dolly song as my camp song. And I don't know why because... If you know me in real life, like, you know how much I love Dolly Parton and how, like, inspirational she is to me. We went to Dollywood. I had a moment. We watched the Miley and and Dolly. I cried. It, it's a much, She, like, has, like, such a special place in my heart. She does. Uh, I just, I have a tattoo of her. I just, I can't. I just, I love Dolly. And, um, yeah, I just, I love her. Well, for Camp Songs, continue to pull out some Dolly hits. Maybe educate the masses on some of these B-sides that I never knew about until you showed me them. What's the one I love? Uh, oh, Smoky, Smoky Mountain Memories. Smoky, Smoky Mountain Memories. Oh, my God. Memories. We'll talk about that one in a later episode because yeah. I'll bring that up if you don't. It's my favorite. Yeah. Oh, it's such a... I didn't... Her B-sides are so... She had so many B-sides that, like, didn't hit radio because they're not, like, typically... Sellable. Yeah. 
but they're they're so good oh my god her it, like pretty much the entire album bubbling over i have the vinyl i will listen to the whole thing all the way through and back then the songs were like a minute and 30 seconds i was like i can get into this over and over i love that so great anyway what is your song of the week my song of the week is I so now I'm I'm it's it's Katy Perry, okay? It's Harley's in Hawaii by Katy Perry. And I was was battling with this internally for a little bit because I'm like, I've already brought up a Katy Perry song. But no, no, no. I'm not gonna hinder my love of music if there's another song in an artist's repertoire that I've already mentioned, okay? So be prepared for some repeat artists, but new songs because these are the people I love. I am a Katy Perry stan for a kitty cat? I'm a kitty cat forever. But this song particularly because it was a single and I don't think it got the respect that it deserved on the airwaves. Not only is this song just a near perfect song in my opinion, the vibes are immaculate, but what really sets this song above everything else for me is the music video. I have a really refined palette for music videos, and we were just talking about this earlier where I feel like the new way, a new age pop girls are not giving what they need to be given. And back in the day when we had Katy Perry, Rihanna, early Nicki Minaj, Beyonce, Lady Gaga, yeah. music videos in that time when I was in high school were a real art form, and it was like, who can outdo who? Who is really bringing in the visuals? And Katy Perry has consistently been doing that her entire career. So the, the basis of this video is Harley's in Hawaii. Let's just start there. Let's just break that down for a minute. Does that, does that like vision for you not give you full body chills? Mm -hmm. Riding a Harley in Hawaii. I would never ride a Harley anywhere, but that idea is just so sensual and sexual to me that I'm instantly attracted to it. The entire um, video starts off with like her on a, like well, her on a motorcycle going through like what appears to be like Maui. Very like, very like rich in the colors. It looks wet everywhere she goes. At one point she's entering a local watering hole. It's not a bougie bar. It's like a local bar and there's a bunch of guys having a brawl in the background and she's sipping out of a coconut in full glam, looking absolutely stunning. The costuming, the wardrobe, her 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 suede pants, the leather jacket with the most beautiful blue fringe. At one point, she goes into a hotel room and she's eating hot Cheetos. She just looks so elegant to me. And the vibes and the music, it's tropical, it's sexual, it's just fun. And she acts her heart out in it. At the end, she's like making out with the love interest. And it's like, first of all, she said, okay, I'm on, I'm on set and I'm giving tongue. I don't care what Orlando Bloom thinks. She's giving full tongue and she rides off into the sunset with this man. And I'll never forget this. She's wearing a brown suede jacket with chunky wooden earrings. And I'm gagged. Who styled this? Who styled this video? I need, they need an award. It is so gorgeous. Um, I'm just really obsessed with it. I'm just, I'm sorry. Her Super Bowl performance was oh, incredible. Honestly, one of the most memorable ones for me, not that I'm not knocking anybody else who's done it, but hers was just like over the top. We had left shark for days and it was just like, she came out on like this massive thing. It was just like larger than life. And that's like what I wanted to see. I just want to see shit explode. Lady Gaga doing that, like, remember when she jumped off the thing? And it yeah, well, that's what you want from a Super Bowl. People want to see, like, it's fun when these, like, reserve ones are nice. Like, last year's was great, too. What but was I, last year? Um, it was, like, that, like, slew of, like, in iconic hip-hop. It was, like, Mary J. Oh, Fly, Dr. Dre, 50 Cent, Eminem. Um, it was great. Yeah. But um, Katy Perry does it like nobody else. I think there's a, a little bit of a disconnect with Katy Perry because, let's be honest, she had a couple flop years. When mm -hmm. she shaved the head to that short pixie blonde, mm -hmm. things went south for her. That's and I'm not going to defend her, okay? Wait, um, Swish Swish, an incredible song. The video, alarming and borderline disrespectful for anyone who's an actual Katy Perry fan. It's it's weird. It's weird. I, I just want to say, I really think that was when she was being pressured so incredibly hard by her label and the people behind her to become an internet person. And she was so disconnected um, in a way that I feel like wasn't really her fault just because she was just shot to fame in like the late 2000s that she was just so disconnected and they were like, let's pull it into like the next younger people. Like they had Liza Koshy on her big brother thing where she was like being filmed 24 seven yeah, and all that shit was happening. Yes. And they were just really trying to pull in everyone from like Vine at the time and put them in a, a music video and, and then green screen Katie or green screen Nicki Minaj into it. And it wasn't working because that like wasn't her, but I feel like she really didn't have a choice because yeah. um, Christine Sadelko was in that music video 
they disrespected her. But she said she was upset by that, but she was never upset at Katie or the way that she was treated by Katie. She went on record and was like, she was absolutely professional to work with. She was so nice. She made everybody feel comfortable and she was like doing her thing. But you can tell that there's just, there was that disconnect, which is, it's just crazy. I feel like it wasn't her fault. I feel like she's regaining it now, though. She's had a lot of rave reviews over her Vegas residency. I need to see it. It, it, It's going to end in April, and I'm panicking because I haven't seen it, and I can't believe it got this many extensions. I'm going to buy us plane tickets for a week, and I'm not joking. It's like, this means a lot to me, and I need to... I've never seen her live, and, like, the era in which she's doing that, like, Vegas residency is, like, the era I care about. Scary stories around the campfire. Oh my god, what is that? What's that noise? Oh my god. Anyway, <laughs> that was a little bit we just worked out. Hey, welcome back. <laughs> just a little bit, just a little ditty for you guys. Hope that wasn't too scary. This is scary stories around the campfire. If you don't know the deal, you guys write into us, campcounselorspod at gmail.com. Embarrassing stories or actually scary stories. And then we read them. Most of them are embarrassing and poop related, but you know what? It is what it is. So let's get into this one. This camper wrote in. A few years ago, my family threw me a big party at an Airbnb the night I graduated college. My boyfriend at the time had his whole family come over for it, as well as my friends, so there were a lot of people. My boyfriend at the time, we'll call him Alex, was DJing the party on his phone connected to the speakers blasting through the house and the yard. I ate something that did not agree with my tummy and had to run to one of the bathrooms in the bedroom and it, and was experiencing horrible dot dot dot. Well, you get it. We got it. I texted Alex what was going on and I told him that I would be back outside soon. Alex was wasted and didn't check his phone. When guests showed up and asked where I was, instead of saying, she'll be back in a minute, he said, I think she went to the bathroom in the bedroom. Follow me. Mm. Literally... <laughs> A worse nightmare. The one thing she said not to do. But he didn't read the text message. So it's like he didn't get it. Then I hear people piling into the bedroom where I'm taking a shit in the bathroom. And that's like you go from a bumping party outside to like a quiet indoor house. And it's just like dead quiet in that. I hope it at least had a a fan on. A fan. I'm hoping. So I started freaking the fuck out. Alex knocks on the door and says, babe, guests are here to say hi. First off, Alex, why would you ever do that? Regardless of what she was doing, if she was like doing a little touch up of makeup, doing nothing related to taking a shit, why would you bring anyone? Why would that happen? Yeah. yeah, You know? Yeah. Okay. I say, I'll be out in a sec. Do you have your phone? And he's like, what? And I'm like, can you check your phone, babe? Please check your phone. And he's like, "Uh, okay, I'll be right back. He leaves and doesn't take a single guest with him. He leaves everyone in the bathroom or in the bedroom where she's in the bathroom. And it's just like, you guys stay here. Now it's dead quiet. Now it's quiet. And she's in there like clenching. Run a faucet. That's a good idea. That's what I would do. That's what I normally do. I'm furious. It's still coming out of me like lava. So I call Alex. And the second I hear it pick up, I start cursing him out quietly. What the fuck is wrong with you? I told you I have diarrhea and I'm shitting my brains out in here. And to hold all the guests out there until I come out. It's silent. I go, hello, Alex. Then I hear an awkward, hey, it's Alex's sister. I have his phone. He was playing music. And that's not the worst part. The whole combo was blasted over the speakers. The entire party had heard it. I was absolutely mortified, but my sister made everyone get extremely drunk and dance and hope people laughed it off and didn't remember. At least that's what I tell myself. Sincerely, trying to poop in peace in cabin eight. Oh no, not on the aux speaker because that's just like <laughs> that that's at maximum mm. volume. The sound cut out, everyone knows that the music stopped, and all they hear is you scream whispering about you shitting in the bathroom and you're the guest <laughs> of honor. They're like, hey, what is what is that uh that new dubstep remix? You know how they used to have like random clips yeah, from yeah. movies in them? They're like, yeah, no, that wasn't me. That was just that was just Skrillex. Yeah, that was a weird lime wire transfer virus. I'm not yeah. sure. It was a virus. <laughs> My pants were down. I got scared. Um, and I also love how she was like trying to shit in peace in cabin eight. Please don't shit in the cabins. There's no there's no toilets in our cabins here. You gotta go to the well, you gotta go to the loo. Isn't cabin eight the condo? 
No, that's sex. Oh, six. Yeah. So cabin eight does not have a bathroom. Stop shitting on the floor. That we... explains that brown goo all over, <laughs> all over the globe. globe. You little nasty. Well, guys, thank you so much for um for tuning in. We love ya. Yeah, make sure you're sending all of your information for dear counselors. Um, Confession Canoe. What else do we have? Uh, Gossip Doc and Scary Stories. Yeah, write to the email at campcounselorspod at gmail.com so we can listen, so we can read it to all the other campers on the podcast. What a fun episode. Are we getting like delusional? I feel like I'm getting a little delusional towards the end. Yeah, because we're like, yeah, for anyone who listens to us for over an hour, you deserve a badge for (laughs) sure. And we'll figure out a way to get one to you. We love you so much. I think that's it for today, right? Yeah. All right. Lights Lights out, out, campers. campers.